So update 11.6 is here and it brings some pretty major changes that I wanna go over today. Of course, we're getting some new ships being added into early access, but the main thing here is the economy change. Hopefully it means a more simplified layout with the same rewards, but we'll get into that in a little bit. To start with, we have British battleships entering early access and if you know me, I'm not a fan of the incomparable a British battle cruiser like this line. So I'm a little nervous about this entire line. I will end up playing them. I'm interested in checking them out, but I'm not very hopeful for how they play. At least for my playstyle, that ship, the incomparable, just doesn't work for me. So a whole line of them might be a little painful for me to grind through. But it is the typical early access we've seen for a while now. You're going to be able to get the tier 10 for some doubloons if you want to. It's pretty expensive, as well as the tier 9. Of course, the only thing that's exclusive to these really are some camos. So as always, I really don't recommend engaging with this early access outside of the free stuff you can get out of it, and that's it. Wait a couple patches for them to fully release, and then you can get these ships for free. Keep in mind though, that with these permanent camos, they do not provide economic or combat bonuses. This is part of the new change that we'll talk about in a little bit. So these are just cosmetic to the ship and that is all. Alongside the British battlecruisers, we're getting an industry titans event. Essentially, if you complete the tasks involved with one of these three, you're gonna get a tier five silver ship, a normal tech tree ship. This is really nice if you haven't actually researched through one of these lines, gives you a small head start and even comes with a six point commander. This is good to go through if you haven't researched through these lines. Otherwise, not a huge reward, but still nice for newer players. The French cruisers have finally left early access and that means that we can all go research all the way up to the tier 10 at this point. I should be doing a few videos in the future on especially the tier 9 and the tier 10 as I'm grinding my way through them. I'm sure if you've seen the Scherberg videos, you'll know I'm not a huge fan of these, but like some people mentioned in the video discussing me joining the CC program, I don't want to lose touch with the game and a normal player's experience. So I'm going to try and grind through all these new lines as they come out the standard way, not just going to play them on a press account, and that is it. It's going to be painful, though. I very much am not a fan of the Scherberg so far. Hopefully the Tier 9 is a little better. And uh, let's just not mention the Italian DDs for now. I haven't played them at all since I got the Tier 8, tried it for a bit, and then dropped them. And here we finally get to the biggest change with this update the separation of exterior visuals and economic bonuses. It's very, very complicated, especially if you guys have looked at the dev blog, but I think the important thing to do is look at the goals that Wargaming has set out for these changes, and then we'll see if they've actually accomplished them in the next week or so as we all get to use this new update and feel it out for ourselves. So those goals are offering an option to select economic bonuses and camouflages separately, simplify management of economic bonuses, make sure the transition from the old system to the new one is as comfortable as possible, and maintain the current state of the in-game economy. So these are the things to keep in mind when looking at this change. For me personally, to simplify it down, they're trying to simplify the UI and make it a little nicer and easier for newer players and veterans alike, as well as not reduce the in-game economy rewards for playing the game. If anything, they're hopefully gonna give us a little bit extra in a few circumstances, but that remains to be seen. There's been some preliminary calculations being done showing that they should be giving us at least the same rewards, if not a little bit more for the similar amount of economic bonuses applied to each ship. This is certainly something to keep an eye on as we go through this update. Make sure you tend to notice how good you're performing in game and if your resources collection from each match is about the same. I hope it is because personally, I actually really do like the newer, more simplified UI. It's been pretty complicated with all the flags and signals and camos and how they all stack. This is a much simpler way of doing things. 
And as long as it gives out the same bonuses, I think that's only a good thing. Alongside these patch notes, they've released an entire separate article just dealing with these exterior visuals and economic bonuses changes. Definitely go give this a read through, but honestly, I think the easiest way to understand it is gonna be to just jump in game and look at the new UI. That's gonna be the easiest way to do things. So now you're gonna see four different options to select for different bonuses. Credits, XP, Commander XP, and Free XP. And each one does not impact the other. So they're all separated out and it's very clear what bonuses you're getting for credits, for XP, for Commander XP, and for Free XP. And their goal seems to be to take all of the best combinations and then simplify how this works while giving us that same best combinations for each tier for our bonus rewards. We can see that right here. On top of that, the permanent economic bonuses are going to be applied separately from the permanent camouflages. So you're going to be able to stack the permanent camouflages bonus alongside the standard upgrades like we're seeing here. Alongside this, we're also seeing permanent economic bonuses being able to be purchased and used separately from permanent camouflages. And these bonuses will be applied to each permanent ship separate from the camo. And on top of that, we can still use the expendable bonuses on top of those permanent bonuses. So premium ships are still gonna be a great way to earn experience, credits, and hopefully we can use whatever camo we want to. So separating this out should mean that you can use whatever crazy skin or camo you want to alongside the permanent bonuses and the expendable bonuses. I think one of the most complicated parts of the old system was how experience was divided out. In the old system, of course, base experience was then multiplied by your normal XP multipliers, and then after that is where the free XP and commander XP were calculated on top of that boosted XP base value. And it was really complicated to know what was the best combination of flags and camos to get the most out of your economy. So with the separation of all of these different values, I think this is going to be a much simpler and easier way to maximize your XP gain for each different category. Free XP, Commander XP, Normal XP, and of course, Credits. Since with the new system, there's no way to reduce the post-battle service cost, there were a few upgrades and bonuses on certain flags and camos that would apply to reducing the post-battle service cost. Those will now be able to be exchanged for resources in the armory temporarily when this update goes live, so make sure you do that. And on top of that, credit income has been boosted and the cost of servicing some of the researchable ships has also gone down, especially at the higher tiers, to make up for this difference. According to this article, the sum of credits earned with permanent bonuses applied to higher tier ships shouldn't have changed. And for lower tier ships, you're probably gonna see a little bit more credits, especially if you play with good combat performance. Keep in mind, this is what Wargaming is saying. It remains to be seen if this is what actually comes out in practice as we all get used to this update. So keep an eye out for updates in the future if we aren't seeing the appropriate amount of experience and credits gained. Keep in mind the goals when it came to this update to simplify things without reducing the income and economy of the current system. If we're seeing anything like that, I'm sure Wargaming will give us a few updates and buffs here and there. Now something to be very, very careful of is the ability to purchase these expendable bonuses for doubloons. So if you have these on auto supply, auto purchase, it's gonna dip into your doubloons. So be very, very careful of that. I would recommend turning off the auto purchase feature. I think that running doubloons with some of these expendable bonuses is probably not the best value you can get out of these doubloons. Premium time usually is your best bet when it comes to doubloons if you're playing the game a lot and then premium ships uh, are probably after that, as far as best value. During this switching process to a new system, you will have the opportunity to exchange large bonuses for a few more smaller bonuses, just in case you want a few more bonuses, but spread out over a smaller bonus amount. 
Alongside this change, they are separating the cost of the permanent economic bonus from the permanent camo that you see on your ship. So the economic bonus is gonna be slightly less than the current premium camo cost, with the difference being made up by the visual that you see on the ship. You can now purchase them separately, and this should make it easier to customize the look of your ship while also getting the premium camo bonus. It's important to note that permanent camouflages that weren't attached to a ship yet can be converted into two different entities. An economic bonus that corresponds to the standard bonus for the tier, and a permanent camouflage that only affects the visual exterior of the ship. So if you have a bunch of permanent camos just sitting there, these might be the Epoch of the Navy event or maybe some other different New Year's events that we've seen that have given a tier eight or tier nine permanent camouflage that could be applied to any tier eight or nine ship. If you have those in stock and haven't applied them to a specific ship yet, you're going to be able to still apply those bonuses to any of those ships at that tier, and you're just going to be able to separate out the visual side and the standard side. I'd recommend not applying any of those unapplied permanent bonuses to ships right now. Wait for the update to come out, and then, of course, pick the ship that you want the permanent bonuses for for the economy, and then pick a different ship or even the same ship for the visual side. If you're curious about the specifics when it comes to permanent camouflages and the changes, here's a little chart that shows the differences at each tier and the cost in doubloons in the new system. Since there are also some special permanent camouflages for premium ships, they're also changing some of those to reflect the new system. You can see those here in this chart. There's quite a few of them and hopefully it just translates into the same amount of experience gain, just simplifies things. Like what they said at the beginning was the entire goal and point of this change. I hope that that is the case, that we're not gonna see any sort of weird changes that result in a dramatic dip in credit or XP income, and that this just simplifies everything while keeping the same rewards. Possibly the biggest part of this change has absolutely nothing to do with the economy and it has to do with how camos physically interact with your ship in gameplay. We're actually seeing that the detectability of all ships has been reduced by 3%. This reflects just running a standard camo. However, they just straight up removed the bonus that increased shell dispersion of enemies firing at your ship by 4%. What this means is that every single ship in the game now is 4% more accurate. It's a big deal considering that the for battleships the standard accuracy upgrade in the third slot gives you seven percent better dispersion so four percent is a big change it will see how that actually plays out in game for me personally as a battleship player that complains about rng a lot and honestly would like a little bit more accurate ships i think i'm gonna enjoy this but i wouldn't be surprised to see a change to all ships in the future to just reduce their dispersion by f or increase dispersion by four percent across the board i wouldn't be surprised to see that but personally i'd love to see more accurate ships and then rework overmatch so it's less frustrating to play against that way ships that are broadside would take more damage without causing even more frustration of more accurate overmatch while a ship is angled now keep in mind i didn't go over everything here but i got the important parts. There's going to be a lot more to be seen while you play the game, but overall I really do hope this is a positive change. Simplifies things without changing the economy at all. Make sure if you want some community tokens and premium time, you do check out these two articles. Now back to the update notes, we're getting some interface changes specifically to do with the map. We're going to be able to see our ship's range, concealment, anything you'd see on the minimap, you can now add to the large map when you push M. We're also seeing updates to the UI when it comes to containers, allowing you to see a more detailed breakdown of what containers you have in stock and which ones you want to open. Of course, here's that premium time in the patch notes. If you want a day, there it is for free. It seems like there were some issues with the AI of bots and Wargaming's done a little bit to increase their AI-ness, hopefully that they just 
act a little more natural in games and don't cause any problems in co-op or AI controlled games. Continuing on with the last update, we're getting the lower tier US destroyer models updated. This is a great thing. Not massive changes here in terms of gameplay. You're gonna notice that all of these values are very, very minor. Simply a visual update so that they look nicer and more modern. It's not like the gearing where it dramatically impacted how the ship played. But it's still really nice to see these being updated so that the game looks a little bit more consistent throughout its art style. Ranked Battles is coming back this patch, except with tier 10 in 6v6 format. Brawls is also here, but instead of 1v1s, we're getting 2v2s, first in tier 10 ships and second in tier 8 ships. There's some updates to your clan's base, interacting with specifically super ships, their cost, and the XP rewards you're getting out of them. With the release of this update, we're also getting the Collingwood. This is a tier 7 British battleship. Looks a lot like the Nelson, right? So we'll see how this thing actually ends up performing when the update comes out. There's a few other minor changes at the bottom of the patch notes, but importantly, the Kansas, Minnesota, and Vermont can no longer slot Propulsion Mod 1. If you guys have seen my videos on the Vermont, it's pretty insane now. Personally, I think the concealment's a bit much, and I would like to see that nerfed back to its old values, but the propulsion and maneuverability is quite nice. Personally, I've been running the rudder upgrades, so this isn't going to impact the way I'm playing these ships, but if you have been running propulsion, you can no longer do that. I would definitely recommend rudder. It's a very surprisingly agile ship when you have these buffs to the propulsion and running rudder mod. So that's it for update 11.6. I hope it's going to be a good one and these economic changes go through and Wargaming accomplishes what they set out to do. No changes to the rewards, but simplifying the UI to make it a little nicer to use. So let me know what you think about this update in the comments down below and thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day.